Hey, hey, have you had your lunch yet? Oops. Well, hold on to your tummy and get set for what if you ate moldy bread by accident? I told you. Hmm. Imagine, you're running late for work or school, as always, right? But you've got to whip up a quick breakfast before you head out the door. Hmm. There's no milk to make a bowl of cereal. But you do manage to find a half a loaf of bread in the cupboard. There you go! Throw it in the toaster, slap some butter and jelly on it, and you're good. Oh wait! What's that green stuff on the crust? Ugh, mold. Eh, it's only on one little corner, so maybe you can just cut that piece off and eat the clean part. Or maybe search the loaf for a slice without this unwelcome furry-looking bread invader. Whoa! Hold on there, cowboy! You don't want to do that! And you're about to find out why. But first, be sure to click the subscribe button and turn on the little notification bell so that you don't miss any of the important updates coming out daily on The Bright Side of Life. So, is it safe to eat the clean part of moldy bread? Well, Brightsiders, the fact is that there's no such thing as a clean part of moldy bread. Yeah, just erase that phrase from your vocabulary, please. Thank you. In all seriousness, this is no laughing matter. The tiny greenish spots you see are only the tip of the iceberg. Now, let's zoom in and take a closer look at that slightly moldy bread of yours. Ew, gross! Yeah, it's nasty, but you need to see this. From this certainly unpleasant angle, we can study the anatomy of mold so that you'll understand why it isn't safe to eat the seemingly clean part of your slice or loaf. So here we go, I'll uh, put on my professor coat and strike an academic pose. Now, mold is basically microscopic fungi that look like skinny little mushrooms. Let's start at the top, which is called the sporangium. That's the part you see rearing its ugly head on your bread. These sporangia are attached to stalks called sporangiophore. And just like a plant, mold has roots called rhizoids that can only be seen under a microscope. These root threads can travel deep into food and branch out to form stolons. These stolons, in turn, connect to other sporangia to basically create an interconnected network. I hope you're taking notes, there may be a pop quiz at the end of this. All right, professor, thank you. You can get back now to grading papers. Oh joy. So yeah, mold is a lot more than just green fuzzy stuff. Speaking of which, the scientific term for green fuzzy stuff is spores. And these spores can easily be carried away by the wind like dandelion pollen flying across a meadow, only super gross and threatening to your health. Then they land on a moist area to form white fuzzy stuff called hyphae. This is how mold reproduces, so don't expect any clean parts whatsoever in that slice of bread. So put that back down. Yes, you. And it's not like mold will invade just one single slice and politely leave the rest of the loaf for you to make a quick sandwich. Sorry, but it doesn't work that way. Dr. Marianne Gravely, <laughs> what a great name, from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, says the softer the food, the easier it is for these mold roots to penetrate. But hey, you're making toast, right? Won't heat just kill the mold? Technically, you can kill mold at very high temperatures, but your toaster isn't going to achieve that. The best and safest solution is to throw away the entire loaf and buy some fresh bread. But let's give mold the benefit of the doubt here because, believe it or not, we eat it on a daily basis. That's right, mold is intentionally grown to make different types of blue cheese, like Gorgonzola, Stilton, and Roquefort. There are also cheeses, such as Brie and Camembert, that are produced by white surface mold. Even soy sauce is made with mold in it. In fact, mold has even saved our lives countless times. You've probably heard the story of how Scottish researcher Alexander Fleming accidentally invented the most famous antibiotic ever, penicillin, in 1928, 
with the help of a type of mold called Penicillium notatum. But just because mold is used skillfully to make certain cheeses and medicines, that doesn't mean you can eat moldy food in your kitchen. We often talk about mold as if it's a singular thing, but there are at least 100,000 different types of molds, and all kinds of them can sprout up on food. Of course, we know that the penicillium molds used in both cheesemaking and antibiotics manufacturing won't hurt us. But you can't be sure what type of mold that is growing on your food. So, is it really worth the risk? The side effects of ingesting mold are no joke, so I won't make any here. You might experience minor stomach discomfort or some really scary stuff like allergic reactions, respiratory problems, muscle tremors, and food poisoning accompanied with vomiting and diarrhea. Some molds have even been linked to cancer. As for the mold that can be found on bread, it's called Rhizopus stolonifer, but more commonly known as black bread mold. We're all familiar with this type of mold, bluish-green with black spots and super fuzzy. Black bread mold may cause a deadly infection called zygomycosis. It can block blood flow and, in worst cases, literally starve cells of oxygen, which ultimately leads to death. So basically, if you see mold on your bread, throw it away immediately. I mean like right now. Ah, but it seems like such a shame wasting food, doesn't it? Well, it's a lot better than taking a mouthful of a toxic fungus and risking your own life. Along with bread, here are some other foods that should be tossed immediately if you've noticed mold growing on them. Lunch meats, bacon, or hot dogs. These products retain a lot of moisture, so mold contamination usually starts way below the surface. Cooked leftovers like meat, poultry, casseroles, and pasta. These foods also have high moisture content that helps mold grow. Soft cheeses. These include cottage and cream cheese, as well as any type of crumbled, shredded, or sliced cheese. Yogurt and sour cream. These are an easy target, so throw them away even if there's only a tiny speck of mold on them. Jams and jellies. Mold thrives on sweet and sugary foods too. <laughs> Just like us. Soft fruits and vegetables, like strawberries, cucumbers, peaches, and tomatoes. Again, the softer the food, the easier the mold can penetrate. But hey, it's not all so bad. According to the USDA, you can still eat some foods if, and only if, they're not completely covered by mold. Hard salami and dry cured hams. Remove the mold by scrubbing the food item thoroughly. Hard cheese like Asiago, cheddar, pecorino, and parmesan. Cut off at least one inch around and below the moldy spot. Be careful not to touch the mold with the knife to avoid cross-contamination. Blue cheese is obviously a moldy food safe for consumption, as long as the mold that's on it was put there during manufacturing. Firm fruits and vegetables, such as bell peppers, cabbage, and carrots. Because they're a bit harder, their surface isn't easily penetrated by mold. Of course, in case of mold growth, you can cut that part off following the 1-inch rule. But the best cure is prevention, right? Yes, there are steps you can take to prevent mold from forming on your food items at least for some time. A lot of it depends on how you store your food. Sealing items in plastic wrap does a pretty good job at stopping mold spores from taking it over. For perishable items, don't leave them out in the open for more than two hours. Immediately consume leftovers within three or four days. As for hard cheeses, after plucking off the moldy part, you should store it in a different container. Canned food should be emptied and stored in the fridge in tightly sealed plastic or glass containers. Your kitchen should be mold-resistant as well. Clean your fridge regularly. Only use fresh clean dishcloths, towels, sponges, and mops. Once you detect a musty smell, 
It means mold has invaded some part of your precious kitchen, and it will contaminate your food later. Hmm. Keep the humidity level below 40%, since mold loves moist conditions. And finally, from the professor, this advice. Always be on the lookout for the fungus among us. Ooh, write that down. Words to live by. Hey, have you ever eaten the clean part of moldy bread? Tell us all about it in the comments below. If you learned something helpful from this video, then give it a like and share it with your friends. Click that subscribe button to join us on the Bright Side of Life.